This is the flag of Northern Ireland, but historically it was also associated with another flag. So in this video, I'd like to look at what happened to the old flag of Northern Ireland. Well, first I should say that actually that isn't entirely accurate. Northern Ireland de jour officially does not have an official flag, or rather it doesn't have an official unique flag. The official flag of Northern Ireland is the Union flag, the same flag that is used for the rest of the United Kingdom, so not specifically for Northern Ireland. So why is this the situation with the flag of Northern Ireland? And what's the history behind those two flags that I showed at the start, which are normally referred to as the flag of Northern Ireland? To find some answers, let's go back to 1921, the year in which the island of Ireland was partitioned and Northern Ireland as a separate entity was created. The reasons for this are deep and rather complicated, and so if you want a more in-depth look about this, then I have several videos covering the topic, such as this one, which I would recommend you check out. A long story short though, this part of Ireland had far more Protestants than the rest. This came as a result of 17th and 16th century movement of English and Scottish Protestants into this northern part of Ireland, thus changing the demographic from being largely Catholic to largely Protestant. And it was clustered in this northern area of Ulster that there were far more Protestants. The reason why this meant they wanted to remain with the United Kingdom and only this part of the island of Ireland was that they would have a majority so that the Protestant government could remain in power rather than sharing it with other Catholics in the area. And so the state of Northern Ireland was created with the six counties that were the most Protestant or had the most Protestants within them in Ireland. Now this is often referred to as Ulster and Ulster the name is one of the four provinces of Ireland that the island was divided into as well as Connacht, Leinster and Munster. A good place to start then is the coat of arms of Ulster, that northern part of Ireland. Now this coat of arms is itself made up of two different coats of arms, one from the de Burr family and that has over the top of it or in the centre of it the red hand of Ulster. Let's first take a look at the de Burrs. Now, the de Burrs were an Anglo-Norman family. We can see the name Burr is itself a Germanic word rather than a French word, meaning a, a fort or a hill or, or a, a castle or something along those lines it's in the old English word Burr. Um, but they had married into the Normans that had come over to England in 1066. So by the time they go to Ireland, being led by William de Burr in 1185 with Henry II, they are a French-speaking Norman family that moves over into Ireland. A little side note is that William de Burr's great-great-granddaughter was Elizabeth de Burr, who actually married Robert the Bruce, the King of Scotland, and was portrayed trade in the film The Outlaw King. This goes to show that the de Burr family was a very important family that moved in high circles. They held lands both in Kent, so in England, of course, with uh, Elizabeth de Burr, she would go on to have a stake in Scotland, and they also owned lands in Ireland as well, particularly in the north, but also in some of the other regions of Ireland, like Connacht too. By the 14th century, many of these Norman families that had come over speaking Norman and some English had started to Gaelicize and became more Irish. They sort of went native. And we can actually see that in that the name de Burr is sometimes also made more Irish at this time. And they probably switch to speaking Gaelic and they start using, or Gaelic rather, and start using Gaelic names. Now, it's their coat of arms that inspires this flag of Ulster, this design. But what about the red hand of Ulster? Well, this red hand is probably a Gaelic symbol, a much older symbol that goes back possibly even to pre-Christian times and connotations with various deities, as well as warriors and the warrior culture of the Irish who fought one another. And this may be why it has appeared on the de Burrs of Ireland on their uh, coat of arms because they had Gaelicized over this time in being in Ireland and so they had added it to their coat of arms to show a new connection with the place they were from and possibly also their lordship over it. Now it was obviously not their symbol to begin with and one of the uh, groups in Ireland that it is linked to is the O'Neills. 
I must also say that there is some debate about whether this was originally the O'Neill symbol. It probably is uh, quite a bit older than when the Uinail rose to power in Ireland. The McGuinnesses have also claimed the Red Hand as their own, but the O'Neills are the ones that are the, this powerful dynasty in the north of Ireland that actually take over as the, the Lords of Ulster from the De Burs. And we find this Red Hand appearing on a lot of the coat of arms of the O'Neill family. Um, as they are throughout Ulster and areas of Connacht as well. And in this way, the Red Hand becomes specifically uh, representative of the north of Ireland and this part of Ulster. Now, this would last until 1603, when the O'Neills were defeated in the Nine Years' War by the forces of the English, first under Elizabeth uh, and continuing on under her successors. And it's after this that we get this plantation of Ulster, as it's called, this transplantation of English and Scottish Protestants into Ulster, which until that time had actually been the most Gaelic part of Ireland that had resisted the strongest against the English. And we start to see an erasure of many of the Gaelic parts of the culture by transplanting Gaelic Catholic farmers with these English and Scottish Protestants. And we see it in the names too. So of course, creating names like London Derry rather than Derry. Uh, and there are a few other examples. And it's largely for this reason that in 1921, following a successful guerrilla war by the Irish Republican Army against the British Army in Ireland, that Ireland is partitioned with the largest part of the, isle of the island becoming independent, becoming the Irish Free State, whilst these six northern counties would become Northern Ireland and remain a part of the United Kingdom as a result of these Protestants there. There was an awful lot of back and forth about where exactly the border should be between the Free State and Northern Ireland. Part of this came from the British wanting to hold on to certain bits of territory, trying to encompass as many Protestants into this new state as they could, because they were under a lot of pressure, not only from Unionists in Northern Ireland, but also from many Unionists in Britain itself, in Scottish and English industrial towns, and also the fact that even though Northern Ireland is the part that became uh, that remained with the United Kingdom, there were many Unionists in Dublin, for example, and other urban centres. So it wasn't immediately clear where it should be. The area also couldn't be too large, because if they made it too large, then Protestants would have a smaller majority, and so the Catholics could reasonably expect more power in a parliamentary system. But eventually the border was decided upon. But as you can see, that border that they decided on to keep those areas with Protestant majorities did not quite line up with the historical borders of the province of Ulster. And so you can see on this map that three of those counties, Donegal, Monaghan and Cavan, were parts of Ulster, but they became part of the Irish Free State because they had Catholic majorities rather than Protestant majorities. And the remaining six counties of Ulster remained in the United Kingdom and became Northern Ireland. And that is why using the coat of arms that had been ascribed to Ulster, the province of Ulster, and turning that into a flag, as we see here, didn't quite seem appropriate for this new state of Northern Ireland, and instead a new flag had to be designed. This happened in 1923, and it was designed by a Unionist in Dublin, which of course was at that point becoming the capital of the free state of, uh, of Ireland rather than being part of the United Kingdom. But he was a unionist that was centered there. So he definitely took this design of the, the Ulster banner as his inspiration uh, for this new flag of Northern Ireland. And we can see this because there are a few changes that have been added to the design that he came up with, which is normally called the banner of Ulster. And we can see that the main difference, obviously, is that the uh, previous design had a yellow background, whilst this one has a white background. Why this is, it may be because the English flag, the St. George's Cross, also has a white background. Of course, the red cross that we see is probably from the De Beers, but that just lines up a little bit better with the ideals of unionism and connections to England and therefore the other parts of the United Kingdom. The other big change is that instead of being in a shield, the red hand is now in a six-pointed star. 
each of those points representing one of the counties. And again, the crown on top of the star represents loyalty to the British monarchy and again represents unionism in that way. And as I mentioned, the um, there is a distinction here. Both are associated with Ulster, albeit that the Northern Irish flag only represents six out of the nine counties, and therefore it's called the Ulster Banner, whilst the previous was called the Ulster Flag. And it's sometimes distinguished that one is the six counties flag, whilst the other is the nine counties flag. This flag then became the standard of the Northern Ireland Parliament, but notably it did not become the official flag of Northern Ireland. Um, as this remained the, the Union flag that was used by the rest of the United Kingdom. So from 1924, we see this flag in use. And in 1953, when Elizabeth II was uh, crowned as the monarch of the United Kingdom, the type of crown on the flag actually changed to represent that. And she gave royal decree that the flag could be used by the Northern Ireland Parliament. And it was used in that capacity for two decades until 1973, when the Northern Irish Stormont Parliament was abolished. And so the flag remained, although it had now no official role inside the country. It had never been the official flag of the country, but it had been the flag to represent the parliament. But now that that parliament was gone, the flag didn't represent anything officially, although of course it had come to represent a certain group of people within the country itself. And that's the situation we basically have today, where the Union flag is the only official flag that is used. But of course, that doesn't distinguish people from Northern Ireland, from England, Scotland, Wales, and various other places. Now, the flag of Ulster as it's being used, or the banner of Ulster, as I should refer to it, is used by certain associations, organizations, and people. For example, in sports, it is often used to represent Northern Ireland, although it depends on which sports. Some of the uh, sports are sports teams play together with the Republic of Ireland, and then they, they use different flags um, than the, the banner of Ulster. Now, this was the flag that was most commonly used by the Unionists during the Troubles and indeed today, and it is therefore not quite a very fitting flag for Northern Ireland because as well as having Unionists, people who feel British, within Northern Ireland there is a, um, a significant minority, I believe almost a majority now, uh, of people that associate more with the Republic of Ireland and Irish Republicanism and therefore do not feel British but Irish. And so they are far more likely to use the Irish tricolour, the flag of the, of the Republic of Ireland, as opposed to this unofficial flag of Northern Ireland. The red hand of Ulster, even though it began as a, a Gaelic symbol, an Irish symbol, is also now more frequently associated with loyalists and particularly with paramilitary groups as it appears on various emblems and logos and, and murals that you will see. Um, I've made a few videos about those if you are interested about that as well. And in fact, flags were an important part of the Good Friday Peace Agreement in 1998. Part of it stipulating all participants acknowledge the sensitivity of the use of symbols and emblems for public purposes and the need in particular in creating the new institutions to ensure that such symbols and emblems are used in a manner which promotes mutual respect rather than division. And actually, a very interesting fact is that in Scotland, an official police statement has mentioned several flags which, if used in a provocative way, the wording is very open, can land you in prison for up to five years. And the Northern Irish uh, flag, or the uh, Ulster banner, is actually one of those flags, alongside the Catalan, Basque, Israeli, Palestinian, um, several other flags from Northern Ireland, uh, the Irish tricolour as well. Um, so alongside a whole host of other flags. So it just goes to show that this flag is really still quite controversial. This has actually led a uh, committee for stability in Northern Ireland uh, who published a report in 2021 to recommend that Northern Ireland 
actually creates a new flag that does represent people from all the communities within Northern Ireland. So not just the British aligned unionists and the Irish aligned Republicans, but also apolitical people, immigrants and, and other groups too, um, into a new Northern Ireland. And they recommend that, that this is done in the future. But whether this actually happens, I've seen uh, no progress on it yet, but I would like to make a separate video on that uh, I know that uh, someone has sent me an email who's quite involved in this Northern Irish flag campaign and so thank you for that email and thank you for everyone who uh, emails in with interesting things like that but I'd like to look at that in uh, another video that will come to the channel. So let me know in the comments below if you enjoyed this video if you would like to see more about flags I mean there's not an awful lot more I can say about flags because I've gone around the uh, entire United Kingdom now uh, with which flags they used to have and in Indeed, many other countries in Europe and beyond. But if you can think of something that you think I, I should cover and, and get onto, then, uh, then I will certainly give it a go in the future. Thank you all very much for watching uh, this video. And uh, yeah, I hope it's been informative and interesting. And if you're from Northern Ireland, let me know, do you see this flag as representing yourself, your community, your ideals? Or do you think it's time that you go ahead and, and make another flag? And if so, what should be on that flag? That's something I'll uh, potentially cover in that next video if I get around to doing it. But some uh, initial suggestions in the comments are always appreciated. Anyway, until then, I have been Hilbert and this has been The History.